Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm sharing with you some more gel plate printing and I'm using gel plates from Jelly Arts, the 6x6 and the, I'm going to say that one's 3x5 to do my prompts from the Birgit Coopson's Gel Printing Challenge with Jelly Arts. This prompt for today, which is 17, is texture plates. Now, Bridget has designed some texture plates for Caravel Studios, and they are basically deeply etched red rubber, which has no padding and no wood. So it's a stamp without the padding and wood, which makes it easy to apply texture to things like a gel plate because it's flexible and you can use just a section or whatever. Um, I don't have any of those. I have large background stamps from Stampin' Up! and I decided to use those. I used to be a Stampin' Up! demonstrator for over 10 years and so I have a large collection of Stampin' Up! stuff. So these are basically the same thing except for they have wood and padding on them. I could remove them and make them into texture plates if I wanted to, but I haven't taken the time to do that. So that's what I'm using for the texture plates prompt. So that being said, I am using darker paint and then using the stamp to remove some of the paint. You know, acrylic paint sticks really well to rubber stamps. So that's why you gotta clean them right away. You cannot let it dry on there unless you want a big mess on your hands. It is cleanable if you soak it in Murphy's oil soap mixed with water, but it's just a pain in the behind. You might as well go ahead and just clean it right away. So that's what I do is I just clean it up right away. So where are we? Oh yes. Um, a couple different ways to use the texture plate would be to do what I'm doing, which is to put some paint on the plate, remove it with the stamp or the texture plate is, you know, whatever you're using, and then put another color over the top so that you can fill in all the little um, areas that have been removed, the paint's been removed, and it looks really cool. It's a fun thing to do. Another way you can do it is to or a, an additional use that you can have with the texture plate is to take the plate that's all wet from the paint that you've removed and put it on another plate. So I, th I think it's a really great idea to have more than one gel plate. Um, I have actually a lot of them. I have several. And I like to use at least two, sometimes three or four at a time for that exact reason. You can use the extra paint off of your brayer on the second one. You can use paint on the second one to be kind of an ink pad to apply it to the other one. You can use paint from your stamp and make more shapes on the second plate. You can do so many things if you have two. If you are planning to buy another one, please use my link to Amazon, to my Amazon store to buy it because that doesn't cost you anything, but it gives me credit if you go from my video to Amazon and they give me a few cents to buy more um, art supplies. So I'm always grateful when people use my Amazon store, or my Amazon links below the video to buy some more stuff. So I say go buy another jelly plate. You should have two because it's so much easier to, to have a long gel printing session if you have more than one plate. So the paint I'm using today is Arteza acrylic paint in tubes. If you are just brand new to gel printing, I recommend the Arteza box of 24 or even they have a box of 60. They're inexpensive and they are the right consistency to use on a gel plate, um, at least for where I live. A lot of people do use craft paint. Uh, craft paint to me drives way, dries way too quick. It has fillers in it. And so it dries instantly on my plates here in Arizona. I can't use craft paint, it just doesn't work. So I like to use uh, medium or heavy body acrylic paint. And these Arteza paints work great for me. So I recommend them if you are starting out because you can get a lot of colors for a little price. So I'm continuing to use the different stamps that I pulled out. I have more, but I didn't get every single one out. We have have to have some sort of a limit. <laughs> Can't gel print all day, although maybe you can. I could. 
but I've got to move on to the next prompt eventually. I'm trying to do about half an hour uh, for each prompt so that I can fit three of them into a 20 minute video fairly well, but I end up going over and then I have to, you know, speed up and whatever, but it's fun. I'm having a great time with the challenge this month and I'm going to try to do videos for all of the prompts that I do, which has been really most of them. Also, if you need more gel printing, I have a gel printing, um, what do you call that, playlist. And I looked at it the other day and it has over 50 videos on that playlist. So you could really watch for a while <laughs> and get lots of inspiration and technique from those videos because I've, I've been doing this for a while and I enjoy it. So yeah, play my playlist if you really want to watch some videos. Uh, a, lot, a common question I get for what paper are you using? I'm using a combination of regular text weight paper, which is just uh, inexpensive inkjet printer paper. I also have this deli paper, which is in the United States, some places we use that for wrapping sandwiches or putting in baskets for fish and chips and stuff like that. I like to use that for gel uh, printing. And then I'm also, I also have text weight, lightweight, black um, paper as well. It's like, you know, printer weight paper. So the next prompt, veggies. Yep, we're not eating veggies, veggies today. We're going to print with them. Okay, I already ate some of them. <laughs> I was making a um, chicken noodle soup and I just brought some of the veggies that I was using for the chicken noodle soup and then a couple other ones I was using for some pico de gallo so that I could print with them. I cut them in half. You do want to like set the vegetables on some paper towels and try to get them dry. If they're too wet, they make the paint bead up on the plate from the moisture from the vegetable. Um, yeah, I have another video where I use fruit and that was really fun too. I used a grapefruit and an orange and a lemon and um, I don't remember what else, but oh, strawberries, I used some strawberries. Uh, I'll try to remember to put that in the I card up in the right hand side if you'd like to watch that video. It's a similar video to this. It was during the challenge last year. So I've got some mushrooms. Um, I cut those in half and I was using a carrot. I cut the carrot in half. I cut the tops off uh, so I could use the tops as well. And I put some green paint down and then used the the veggies in the onto the plate to lift up the paint to make impressions and in some cases I pressed the vegetable down with an extra piece of paper and removed some of the paint. Um, this is my first try that was mushrooms that you just went by real quick which is kind of fun <laughs> if you ever printed with mushrooms. The other thing that I was going to do that I forgot to do was I was going to grab a potato and I was gonna um, cut it in half and then cut out shapes from the potatoes. Do you remember back in kindergarten or something where you did potato printing with tempera paint? Um, you could certainly do that with a gel plate and I meant to do it and then I completely forgot about it. I had all these other fresh veggies and I just like, oh, I'm gonna use these. So I did a carrot and there's several different ones from the carrots that you'll see coming through. I'm just kind of putting the different um, pictures in here in between so you can see how some of the prints came out with specific vegetables. Now this time I wanted the, the mushrooms to be mushroom colored, which they're white button mushrooms. So I'm using some unbleached titanium or Titan buff paint and I'm using the small plate as an ink pad and then picking up the paint with the mushroom and then applying it to the other pad. And then I thought I would do an onion. This is half of an onion. Um, I'm making impressions with that. Onions are kind of cool because they have those layers upon layers upon layers on the inside. So you get that texture. But I guess mine wasn't as, I don't know. I saw other people's onion prints and they were much nicer than mine. I guess my onion was too tight. 
Maybe it was a type of onion. Maybe I should have gotten a different type. I don't know. It's a sweet onion of a dahlia. So there's my mushroom print. I really like that one. That might be the best one. <coughs> I, I thought it was really fun. So on the smaller plate, I put some yellow and then I removed some paint with the onion. And then now I'm taking some uh, brown paint and going back over, picking up the brown pa paint on the second plate and applying it to the other plate, trying to get like a brown impression inside of the yellow impression, just making it slightly offset so that it, I thought it would be kind of cool to do that. And then on my other one, I already had the brown with the onions, so I just went ahead and put some other paint on there. And I'm using my carrot to make some impressions. They almost look like fingers. It's kind of weird. <laughs> almost like fingers. And then I've got my carrot top, and I decided I would try to apply paint by braying the paint onto the leaves and then putting the leaves on and applying it. So that was another experiment I did. This is pretty fun. Picking them all up with that same unbleached titanium paint. So I do have a white, a black, and an unbleached titanium that I'm using during this session in addition to the Arteza paints because the white is empty and the black is empty of my Arteza paints. <laughs> I used them all up. They're not bigger than the other ones, so I used them all up. I'm trying to use these paints up, obviously. I don't want them to dry out. I've had them for a while. So here's a jalapeno pepper, and I cut that guy in half, removed the seeds. The reason I removed the seeds is because I think, if I remember correctly, last time I printed with any type of food, I think it was a tomato. The seeds came out of it and got on my plate, and I had to sit there and pick all the seeds off. So I decided not to leave seeds into my um, jalapeno. So I thought it would be fun to have that shape. It's an iconic shape. I made sure that I picked one that had a hooked uh, end. And then that print is made with the bottom of the celery. I cut the bottom of the celery off so that I could put, um, I could cut up some of the celery and then put the other, the rest of the celery. I put peanut butter on it and had it for lunch. So, um, the bottom, when you cut it off, it has all the little crescent shapes. And I thought that I made more prints with it, but I guess I didn't. I guess, I don't know. It, it makes kind of a what looks like a rose or something. It's cool. So I should have made more, but I don't know. I guess I forgot. So there's some blue chili peppers. And then some yellow chili peppers on blue. I also obviously did red. Um... I think this is where I decided, you know what I should do with the smaller plate, the tiny one, is I should be decorating envelopes because it's fun to send decorated envelopes when you're sending your happy mail or your thank you notes. So I, I started to do that with my prints from the smaller plate that I was making in addition to the larger ones. Larger being six by six, which isn't very big. <laughs> I haven't got, I don't have out my large plate. I'm just using the smaller ones because there's a lot of gel printing going on. So that's with the carrot top. Uh, not the guy, the actual leaves from the carrot. <laughs> Every time I say carrot top, I laugh because I think of that weird guy with the red hair, red curly hair. Some more with my, um, jalapeno, some more onions. That onion one turned out cool. I liked the crusty bits that came up. Hashtag crusty bits. <laughs> there was some blue left on the plate. If you don't know what a crusty bit is, there was crusty bits left on the plate that came up with the next print, which I always enjoy. I think it looks cool when you get those uh, serendipitous extra colors that you weren't expecting. I think my colors were two the same on that one. Here's some more carrots. I guess I was really into the carrot because I ended up getting more carrot prints than anything else. Just trying to get it to work. And I got a second print uh, from that chili pepper one onto envelopes. But that's smart because now I have decorated envelopes. 
I don't have to go and, you know, spray them or do anything with them to make them decorated. And I think that, you know, the postal workers need, workers need to see some colorful stuff coming through. So when I mail out thank you notes and things, I will be using gel printed envelopes. Yep, that's my plan and I'm sticking to it. I have some thank you notes I need to mail. I haven't got to it yet. I think I've said that before in a video and then I haven't even done it. It's terrible. <laughs> I got all the addresses. I just haven't sent them yet. So here, it, that, that turned out cool. You can't really tell it's a carrot, but it turned out cool. So there is veggie prints and then prints with veggies on my envelopes. And I can just put a label in the center and write the person's address. So that'll work out fine. Next prompt, prompt number 19, is complementary colors. So complementary colors, I was showing you there on my color wheel, actually using it as a tool for once. Um, those are the colors that are across each from each other on the wheel. So blue and orange, red and green, violet and yellow. Thing you need to know about complementary colors is that if you get them one on top of the other one, they make a unattractive color. It might be a gray, it might be a brown. It's what people refer to as mud. Uh, basically just a yucky neutral color is going to be made if you mix two complementary colors together. So when you're doing on the gel plate, you want to make complementary colors, which is a fun thing to do because those colors are complementary in that they they um, complement each other and make each other look brighter. So when you put an orange next to a blue, both colors look brighter and more fun and more interesting. I don't know why. It's just the way it is. It's color science. So <laughs> you just have to make sure that you don't mix them together. And like in the case of this print, um, the one on the 6x6, six six, when I show it in the close-up, you'll see that right where the two colors are mixing, there's a gray a grayish color. I decided to throw a little bit of um, Posca pin on there while I was messing around. So, and it wasn't dry yet when I put my pickup acrylic on there. Still making envelopes with my smaller plate. That's the perfect use for those. I don't know why I didn't think of that until now. It's perfect. Then you have the decorated envelopes. I could also flip them over and do the flap of the envelope on the bigger plate if I wanted to. So I was talking to myself there. I, I don't imagine that you heard what I said. Um, <laughs> there's, a, there's a complimentary a complimentary color thing that's that's also with also three. So you pick a color and then instead of using the one directly across, you use the two that are next to the one on either side of the one directly across. So that's what I'm doing with this, um, the red and then the yellow green and the blue green. Those are all complementary to each other. So I figured I'd make a, a print with that. It's not a triad, that's a different thing. And it's not a tetrad, that's a different one. This is a complementary split or split complementary. I decided to pick this one up with a metallic paint. So I got out a green gold metallic paint to pick it up and I think it, it turned out very nice. Of course, you guys can't really see the shimmer because it's on the video, but trust me, they're shimmery. <laughs> kind of can a little bit. All these stencils that I use for the complementary color portion of this video are from Stencil Girl. So I, I picked that one up on some craft colored deli paper and then there was a lot of paint left on the plate so I decided to pick it up with the black and just make like an interesting pickup print. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to turn on those notification bells. Very important. Also, you can share this on Pinterest and... Um, I'll have links below the video 
uh, products that I used if you're planning on checking them out. And um, I'll try to remember to link the color wheel because maybe you don't have a color wheel. It is a useful tool. I'm not obsessed with using the color wheel. Um, I use it sparingly because I like to pick my own colors. So in this case, this is a tint complementary. So if you take a color and you mix it with titanium white, it becomes a tint. That means a pastel, basically. So I picked the tint um, color of the, what is it, the orange yellow and the blue green, I think. the blue, I don't know, anyway. <laughs> They're tense. That's all I know. And then I used the the black underneath the stencil and then lifted the black out of the stencil and put in the complementary colors. So that is it for complementary colors. There's some more close-ups coming up. And I will see you in the next jelly printing video. Bye-bye. <laughs>